summer is here, baby, and I can't think of a more perfect place to start this video than right here in my garden. I've been working on some really fun projects here at home, and I've kind of been wanting to refresh little small spaces in our home and just things that like I've been dreaming on these winter months, and now that the weather is good, I'm like, okay, I am ready to rock, let's do it. So I can't wait to share with you some of my little mini makeovers that I've been doing. But before we jump into the house, I have to show you my roses, the new roses that I got. Remember that vlog video where I, like, I almost kissed the UPS man because he was bringing my bare root roses? Well, they are blooming this week and they are so incredible. I really want you to see these. I can't believe how many blooms I already have on this rose. I really liked this particular variety. This is called the State of Grace rose and they looked very much like an old fashioned type of rose to me because they're the spray variety and I love that because I can just pick one stem off of here and it gives you like an entire bouquet. It's interesting when you get different varieties of roses in your garden, how varied the scents really are. This rose kind of has more of a fruity kind of scent. And then the other one that I got over, over here, this is the Francis something or other. I'll, I'll tell you the name down in the description box, but it smells so fragrant. It's like a very it's like spicy kind of rose scent. And it's very, I guess, overwhelming because you pick one rose and it'll like smell up your whole room. But I just love these two and I'm really proud that they're coming in super healthy. You know, it was so fun for me to see just explode with color because as you saw I got them as a bare root and they were pretty ugly when they came in the bag but they're just stunning now and I love having different roses that you don't really see very often so it was really fun to kind of get a different variety that was a little bit unusual to the garden. Anyhow let's go and check out some of the projects I've been working on around the house. painting was that fast. That was actually a fun little video for me to clip and edit together. But our house, when we had it painted, they just sprayed everything yellow over here and it kind of just looked like a big yellow blob. So I wanted to be able to paint this door to match all of the other exterior doors in the house. This isn't to like a, a cute Pinterest she shed by any means. It's a real garden shed full of junk and it's dirty in there. So I'm not gonna show you the inside. Yeah, this is where I have all my gardening supplies and stuff, but I still want this space to look pretty. This is a little walkway off of the back of the house that leads to our shed. But I just wanted to clean it up back here so I feel like it finally ties in with the rest of the house. I think I am eventually going to put some kind of a climber back here. I don't know how well a climbing rose would do over in this space because this gets about 50% shade, 50% sun. So I want to find something that can climb on here and give, you know, good color, but also not like overtake the entire fence line either. So maybe some kind of a petite grower. If you have any ideas for me, please let me know down in the comments below because you know I love any excuse to go to the garden center. These things over here I packed around with me for years. So I think these have been like at three different homes already but I went to a neighborhood garage sale event and I got the pair for $20 and they are incredibly heavy cast iron. I don't know if they were originally architectural pieces or just garden art or what they were from but I was determined to get these things. So I'm walking around a neighborhood garage sale with these two heavy iron things, like trying to make it back to my car and I'm blocked away, but I'm like, I have to have these things, they're so cool. But architectural pieces and especially garden related, like garden art things, I love to keep an eye out for when I go to garage sales and estate sales and stuff. I just love to find things that are like really unique that kind of add a different texture mixed in with all of my plant life and stuff. But I thought these look super pretty up here and they actually took me longer to hang these than to paint the door and they had this little like dinky little hook on the bottom or on the back of it and it was really hard to get on there but I did it. I was out here sweating up a storm but I did it girl. It's determination. <laughs> Before I bring you inside, I have to show you my hanging basket over here. If you've been a subscriber of mine for a while, you may have seen this video, but if you're new, please subscribe now and check out the video on how I made this hanging planter basket because it's so cool and it's a really great way to kind of rework something from the past, especially if you love vintage and antiques like I do, so check this out. I just filled up this basket so it's looking a little bit lanky and I fertilized it, so I'm hoping that it kind of fluffs up and fills out a little bit here in this next week. 
sweet. But this is made from a Victorian hanging oil lamp. I kind of repurposed this thing and I like, I turned all the parts upside down so it would house one of these metal baskets so I could create my own Victorian hanging flower basket. But anyhow, I have a really easy DIY. It was super simple to do. These are also really great things to look out for at estate and garage sales. I've seen these a lot. And obviously like we don't use gas electricity anymore. So these kind of just sit around these carcasses and I think you can find them pretty easily. But I just thought this was a fun little DIY and I think you might have fun making this too. Okay, this is our side entry. So this leads right into the kitchen and our little powder room. And I feel like everyone that has, you know, like two entries to your home, like we all use like our kitchen side entry to come in here. And I've never really shown you this space because it's always been kind of ugly. To be honest, like we just kind of throw our shoes on the floor right here and you know, purses and all these things hanging up. And it's just kind of been a, like a neglected, ugly space. So I've never shared it before, but this year, <laughs> I really wanted to take the time to look at all of these ugly little spaces around the house and do what I could to make them a, a pretty spot that made me excited to see. And especially, you know, when you open up the front door of your house, you want it to feel like, yay, I'm home. You know, not like some ugly thing that you walk into. So <laughs> I want you to see this really cool transformation that I did. Cause as you know, I'm addicted to wallpaper. So I want to show you what I've been up to. If you know me, you know that I love big impact design with minimal effort. <laughs> I love transforming a space without killing myself and breaking my back, honey. I think one of the best ways to accomplish that is by either adding a pop of color with paint or maybe a fun print with wallpaper. And so that's what I'm doing today in our little side entry. We're standing in this small little closet of a space. And this is our entry space off of like our garage here and off the kitchen. And I want to do something that's like fun and colorful and feels beautiful like right when you walk in and it's literally you're standing at the door so we're gonna be working on this wall right here and I can't wait for you to see this mural I've had this stashed away in my closet for some time but this is Sean Zhang wallpaper and it's from the very same artist where I have that beautiful clematis wallpaper upstairs in my dressing room she creates really beautiful designs that literally look like a painting and I think that is so I iconic of homes this era. A lot of Victorians back in the day had beautiful wall murals, especially in their dining rooms and stuff. And I kind of want to have that same effect. You know, hiring, I think a muralist would be extremely expensive, but I want to save some money. I'm going to do it myself today. And I think we can knock this out here in an afternoon. So let's get started. Okay. The one thing I am going to have to figure out, and I really need your advice on this. If you have a little mud room or an entry of your own at your house, what do you do with the shoes? Cause we don't have a lot of space here and they end up being piled like right when you walk in the door. So that is one ugly part <laughs> of design that I don't know how to remedy over here. <laughs> So for now, I'm just gonna kick shoes out of the way. But our contractors just finished this wall over here. So it's actually the perfect time for me to work on my wallpaper project. He's left off the quarter round here at the baseboard. So he's left that part off for me so I can wallpaper right up to it. And then he'll add the quarter round and some caulking once it's finished. And that is like the best way to be able to hang paper. If you can run it behind those moldings, it makes it look so pro. That was a detail and a point in time I didn't wanna miss. It's kind of like a critical time right now for me to do wallpaper. But let's look at this. Oh my gosh, you are gonna die when you see this. Look, aren't those beautiful? So the colorway is this gorgeous sage green and I love sage green. I think it is so stunning. And I think that it is like wonderful neutral as well because I'm able to add different kind of pops of color. You know, as time goes on, I can change colors in my kitchen or like the entry rug color itself. It's such a beautiful, beautiful, soft color, but look at that. I just think this is gonna be amazing. I think I'm only gonna need like two and a half panels here as well. So I'm gonna lay these out. I'm gonna get all my supplies ready and get to rocking. Okay, lucky for me, my whole house is like a construction zone right now. So I have lots of room to work here in the living room with all the furniture moved out of the way. So I'm gonna roll out the panels right now. I'm so excited to see this. Oh my goodness. So this is basically like one big long strip and you have to separate the panels themselves. So I'm gonna move these things out of the way and we can unroll this together. Like this is probably the best part besides it just being done. <laughs> Let's see what this first one looks like. 
Ooh, I see trees, I see trees. <gasps> oh my goodness, the color way. Oh wow, look how beautiful. You know what I was kind of thinking? I want your opinion on this. I think I'm gonna have a lot left over and I've seen people in some of my decor magazines take these panels and then they'll frame them out with little like thin like picture molding. And I was thinking it might look really cool like on either side of the TV here, like giant, they would look like really giant framed pieces of art because we don't have anything else. And it also like elongate your eye, I feel like. I think that might be happening because this color is like so complimentary with our walls in here. <laughs> so that'll be another project another day. I'm, I'm the kind of person where I'm like, if things are moving along here and I got ideas, I just keep adding to the list <laughs> and it never ends. You can ask my husband. <laughs> oh my gosh though, look at that. Okay, that's gonna be like panel number one then. Okay, so here's the line. You see that little dotted line here at the bottom? I'm just going to try to lay this down without bending anything. This is the part where like maybe having another set of hands would be useful, but it's not totally necessary. I think we can totally do this by ourselves. All right, so, oh my gosh, this is the same razor blade I stabbed myself in the knee with last time I did this. Probably the most dangerous part of wallpapering is this little dinky razor blade, so be careful. All right, probably be easier than that, like this. Move this like that. I'm so good at tutorials. <laughs> Put this here. This part like doesn't matter if it's perfect. We're just separating the panels here, but for goodness sake, we're gonna get to try to get a nice clean line at least. Keep your blade where it is and move your thing. And we got a nice clean cut. Now, every time you do anything, put the cap back on, child. Just put the cap back on. Oops, there we go. All right, cool, I got panel one there. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be gorgeous. Okay, I'm gonna keep rocking away at the other two panels. You don't need to see how to cut things. I'm sure you already know how to do this. Okay, see you soon. So one funny thing about wallpaper is, is when you do it, it's hard, it's stressful. And then you tell yourself, you're like, I'm never gonna do this again. And yet here we are. If you allow <laughs> enough time to pass in between projects, you completely forget the difficulties and the stresses that you've been through and you're like, let's do it again. <laughs> so to get rocking here, we just need glue. You wanna get more wallpaper glue than you think you need. I've done this a few times already and I found that you really wanna put a lot of glue on the walls. If you don't get enough glue on there, you're gonna get bubbles. You're gonna get peeling and lifting of seams. So it's really important that you have more than you think you actually need. I have this little rubber roller here. I bought a wallpaper kit years ago on Amazon. This came in there along with this uh, squeegee spatula thing and then the razor blade itself. And there is a larger roller, I believe that it came with, I can't find it in our junkie garage, but it's like the best little wallpaper kit. I think it was under $20 and it basically has almost all of the things that you need. And I've used this a million times. These little rubber rollers are wonderful to meet up the seams. It really helps suck them down and makes them look somewhat seamless as they can be. It's such a great little tool. Uh, you're gonna need a paintbrush too, cause you're gonna wanna get like up on the ceiling and into the corners and stuff with the glue. So make sure you got a little brush with you as well. And then I like to apply the, the glue itself with a roller. So just get a normal paint tray and a little roller here. I'm gonna dump glue inside of the tray and then you just kind of roll it on. I do not put the glue all on the wall at once. Let's go over and talk about this, hold on. I like to glue as I go. So I'm gonna be working on one panel at a time. And hopefully I didn't mix up panels when I just sat them down in the kitchen. Cause it's very important that you go in order, especially with these murals, they gotta line up. So I'm gonna go in here with my brush and work my way all around the, to the edges of the walls here and up towards the ceiling in the corners. And then I'm gonna go in with the roller and really get snotty on the wall. <laughs> Let's get snotty. You know, there's a time in life when it's okay to be sassy and snotty and this is the time with wallpaper glue. Okay, I just ran and got one extra tool. I don't know if I need my big ladder in here or not. I'm hoping my little step stool will do, but this way I can reach all the way to the top. The only part that's stressing me out is when I get to the little window situation up there. I did watch some YouTube videos this morning to kind of see what other people suggested as tips. So wish me luck.
Okay, this wall mural, I feel like I'm getting like really good at wallpaper lately because I've had a lot of practice. So this is super simple to set up. I only did three panels on this wall and I have a lot of wallpaper left. It's so beautiful and kind of a tranquil look right when you walk in. I think with my leftover wallpaper, I'm gonna add this to our bedroom. I really feel like it would be gorgeous. I'm finding myself really getting botanical with my decor. I just love it. I love to feel like I'm always in the garden because we live in Oregon and three quarters of the year it is raining here and I literally can't wait to get outside and be in the garden and be among the flowers and stuff but most of the year I can't do that and so I realized if I can incorporate an outdoors in botanical vibe within my decor like nothing makes me happier and I love how this mural turned out because it really looks like a watercolor we recently had some friends come over and she's like wow did you paint this I'm like yeah <laughs> just kidding <laughs> But I love the soft colors in it. This is from the same artist, Sean Zing, who did the clematis mural in my dressing room. It has like the big flowers all along the top and stuff. This is from the very same artist. I almost forgot one of the coolest parts of this space. So I've been toting around these um, like lead glass looking window things. Uh, they were from an old lawyer's bookcase. And like, you know, the oak ones that have the doors that they open up like this and they push back into the bookcase. So that's what these pieces were from. And I've toted them around for years. I got them at a garage sale for 40 bucks. And at the time, I think I got like three or four of them. So I sold some of my antique booth, but then I also kept a couple. And my mom was, was always telling me like, don't get rid of those things someday. You're really gonna wanna use them in your house. And I'm glad I listened to my mom so I had them shoved in the closet. And when we had our contractors rework our pantry space, I thought what a great idea to finally use these and incorporate them into to the space. So I love that they kind of feel like a transom window, something you would typically see in a Victorian house. And I can't help but think that our home before it was remodeled, like in the 1990s, that it may have had transom windows because that was a very common thing for older homes to have to allow heat and cooling exchange. But not only are they beautiful to look at, it also kind of allows more natural light to come into our pantry space because otherwise it would kind of feel like a little bit of a cave in there. So I thought it was really cool to to finally use something that I've been hoarding for years into our house that feels like it's been there forever. I just, I love how this turned out, it's so cool. <laughs> Anyhow, I love this space. It really cleaned it up. It feels like super soft, like a tranquil spot in here. And the coolest part is, is that it really ties in with our little powder room in here. So come check this out. If you haven't seen this room already, I'm excited to show you this one too. This is our downstairs little, it's like a mini bath, like a powder room, I guess. But this is what my husband calls the bird bath because of the wallpaper in here. This wallpaper, so funny. I've heard that if your marriage can survive wallpaper, it can survive anything. And we made it, honey. <laughs> this wallpaper was not easy to hang. So if I have any tips for you, if you're gonna take on a wallpaper project, choose the thicker stuff, like spend the little bit of extra money because it's gonna save you a whole lot of heartache in the and if you can get like the woven or the canvas type wallpaper, much like the mural was that I just showed you, it's so much easier to hang. It doesn't move on you. You don't get bubbles or wrinkling. This paper was is beautiful as it is, this was not an easy one to hang, but we just love this room. And I especially love, like I was saying, how they tie in together. They very much feel botanical and earthy and nature-like. And I really like how this, this little area is coming along in here. So I just thought you'd want to check it out. This is our little side porch out here. And this is an awesome spot to sit when we have shade. But this cool glider Pete got for me, I think it was my 30th birthday. Target at the time did reproduction patio furniture. And I always loved the look of a really cool like vintage glider. So he got this for me as a surprise, but I'm thinking this summer, I'm probably gonna paint it. Thinking more of like a soft kind of slaty blue to kind of tie in with everything else around here. So that'll be a fun little DIY for me. But we're actually talking about getting the porch tree done this fall. The boards are getting a little bit squishy and worrisome. So we're gonna have that redone along with the railing and stuff. But in the meantime, I put down this really beautiful runner rug. This is from Revival Rugs. It's the same brand 
end as that really pretty minty green rug that we have in our upstairs bedroom. And I love this out here because normally I, like, I'm not wearing shoes or sandals or anything. It feels really good to be barefoot, but they have this same rug in lots of beautiful color choices. We haven't had any sun fading at all, which is awesome. And if I do need to clean anything, I just kind of squirt it with the hose and it cleans up really well. It's really, really good quality too. So I suggest like if you're looking for any outdoor rugs, I loved this brand. I'm gonna link it down in description for you too if you wanna check that out. But this just turned out to be like a really fun little chill spot over here. This flower pot, oh my gosh, I'm so proud of this one. This I feel like is the perfect example of a really great outdoor arrangement. <laughs> Not to brag or anything, but uh, you know I'm a plant geek. So one of my subscribers years ago told me like a tip and it always stuck with me. So if you find yourself in the garden center and you're a little bit overwhelmed and you just don't know where to start, remember these three things. And it's so cute too. So if you're creating any kind of container, you just need three things, a filler, a spiller, and a thriller. <laughs> Like, isn't that the cutest thing ever? <laughs> so I created this arrangement and I was like standing around at the garden center and Pete's all, what are you doing? Like, what is taking so long here? I'm like, babe, I have to like work out my thriller filler spiller vision in my mind here. And so I put together this gorgeous arrangement and it's really getting full and fluffy. The vivid geraniums just look super happy. I don't know what these two are called, but I just picked these out because I thought they'd be really complimentary in the arrangement. But I like really doing things like these kind of arrangements that last throughout the summer. They look really beautiful on patio tables as well, rather than like a cut bouquet, you know, that can wilt in summer heat. It's awesome to have plants that you can enjoy it all summer long. This little table I've had with me for years. I used to work at an antique mall and people would come in and sell things or want to sell things, I should say. Most of the time it would kind of be like junk. And then every once in a while there'd be something really cool that would come through the doors. So a lady had this in the back of her car and she's like, I don't want this thing. And if you want it, 40 bucks and it's yours, honey. So it's so perfect out here on the side porch and just as an outdoor table, it's something I don't have to worry about and just squirt it off with the hose when I want to clean it. So this year I'm also going to be spray painting. I think I'm just going to have giant like spray paint sash out here in the yard, but everything kind of needs to be touched up a little bit. I think I'm going to go in and like hand paint all of these little flowers in here to look like a colorful bouquet again. And I might do a different color on this table, although I kind of like the coral peach type look too. I really can't decide what color I want to paint it yet, but that was just an awesome find. I've, I've really never seen another little table like this. And it's, it's all the things, all the things, check, check, check that I love. <laughs> we finally got that really cute Victorian shelf hung up. All right. I shouldn't say we because Pete did it. So Pete did it. Pete finally did it. I was <laughs> just kidding. But uh, we've hung that up here at the head part of the bathtub. And it was so funny. You know, like that, that video when I put that out, nobody cared about the cool Victorian's handle that I got on my little shelf. Everyone's like, where's Pete's fish? Did he get the fish? And he did. We just forgot to film that part. But like we got that for his friend. He has a pool room, a man cave or whatever you call it. And he converted his garage into his, his pool room area. So he's got like a pinball machine, an old bar signs and this big pool table in there. And he likes like vintage, vintage man memorabilia. But we just thought he would really like that giant taxidermied fish. Cause we've never seen a salmon that big. Like that thing is massive. So I hope someday I can take you over to his house so you can see that all set up. His space is all secondhand finds. Like he's a big garage sailor too. And I think it'd be kind of a fun, fun thing for you guys to see. Yeah. So I'll bring you over there next time we go visit. All right. I wanted to show you the little shelf though. So this bathroom, much like the downstairs one, it's a small space. We don't have big bathrooms here in our home. So with that said, I need to get creative with my storage. I am a girl that likes lotions and potions. Sometimes I am dry. Sometimes I need to exfoliate. Sometimes I can't decide which perfume I want to wear, whatever it may be. With that said, I need lots of room to house all of my little things. So I want to be able to have like a beautiful display and something that was complimentary to our kind of antique looking space. And so I've been keeping my eye out forever for one of these shelves. I've been looking at garage sales and every antique mall I've been going to with my mom. And when that estate sale photograph popped up on the marketplace ad, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to go. So it was still there hanging on the wall and the lady said 20 bucks. I'm like, I'll take it. Enough said, but it matches the one we have on the opposite side of the tub so perfectly. They're not 
alike. They're not identical, but they're complementary, and I like that. This space has been really slow to come along. If you've been a subscriber for a long time, or if you're new, maybe go back and watch that video because we've really transformed the space, but I've taken my time doing it because finding let's say antique appropriate bathroom stuff is really, really hard to find, especially when it comes to medicine cabinets and fixtures and the shelving, you know, all that stuff is really hard to find. You can't just look on Wayfair or go to Home Depot for these things. So I just kind of wanted to take my time and find the right things. And I just love how this little space turned out over here. I like to have fresh blooms. I picked one of those ones from the garden and I placed it on the little shelf. This one is that Francis Rose again. I'll I'll leave that name for you down below, but it just smells really pretty. And this time of year, I love to have fresh flowers here in the bathroom. This is a really funny thing. Every time I share this space, everyone always asks me about the curtain privacy situation because I have these string curtains in both of our bathrooms. It's like a fringe on them, but they're really pretty because they're light filtering, but obviously it's still a window. If I can see out, people can probably see in and just look me in the eye for a moment because I am not an exhibitionist <laughs> by any means. So I want to share this little uh, blind with you. So this is what I do, just so you know, I'm not a freak a leak. <laughs> I actually have a, a blind for privacy. Okay, don't start no rumors. <laughs> I just wanted to give you a quick update on Toby's room in here. It's so funny when I did this little room makeover, everyone's all, Toby loves his new room. And this is where he comes and naps here. This is our guest room. And I just changed the bedding in here. I really didn't do much. I still have the swan chair that I got at that estate sale. And then the other one is downstairs. We still have like a little bit of work to do for renovation stuff down there. And then I'm gonna share the living room with you. But I still have that over here, which is an awesome little side chair, you know, for your guests if they want to sit down and put on their shoes or like plop a suitcase there. It's the perfect little thing. But I just kind of wanted to update the bedding in here to a really pretty soft pink for the summer months and stuff. But I just love this room. The light in here in the morning, it's really dreamy and soft in here. Oh my gosh, looking at this bed, I'm like, you know what this needs? It needs one of my little net lace bedspread things. I don't, I don't know. How, I didn't remember that I had two of these. I don't know how I acquired two. I should probably put one of these on my website. I normally don't have these on the bed because Toby does lay on here. And when he was a little kitten, he snagged one of these and one of my sweet friends like repaired it for me. And you can't tell anymore because this thing is so busy, but I just want to protect them because they're like over a hundred years old. I don't know which size is which. Let's see. Oh, this one's so gorgeous. It has like bows and flowers on it. I think this is a twin size. Isn't that pretty though? Gosh, I love this stuff. I love to collect it because it's hard to find, not because I need more. It's not what collectors do though. Like no one actually needs this stuff. <laughs> we just like it. <laughs> oh yeah, this one has the crochet and flowers. Maybe that'll be the one I'll do. I don't know where I got a twin size one. Isn't that embarrassing when you like thrift stuff and then you forget what you have? That's why I like to get things out and enjoy them. I've been trying to do that more with my dishes and stuff. And instead of having, you know, special dishes that are seasonal, you get out at Christmas time or Thanksgiving and then you put the special dishes away. I just decided that every day should be special and I'm gonna use the stuff that I've worked hard for and bought and just enjoy it. Because what good are these things that you collect, you know, and work hard for if you're not enjoying them and they're not seeing the light of day, you know? That's kind of sad. So I'm trying to make a point this year to enjoy these things. And this is an example of me eating my words because I shouldn't have had this tucked away for nobody to see it. That's what this needed. It, the bed looked kind of flat, huh? Just with the duvet on it. But then I'm probably gonna like fold it down or put something over top just in case Toby comes in here and snags it. Oh, that's pretty now. Okay, I'm happy. I like it. I like it. <laughs> this is my next little area that I'm gonna be working on. And I have to tell you this because I want to save you from maybe your artwork getting damaged. When my mom was here house sitting, the pictures started falling off the walls and some of them were put on by command strips and I can't say that I recommend them. Like I, I'm telling you, I don't recommend them <laughs> unless it's something really light. And I know they all have different kind of weight restrictions on the command strips. I was abiding by the rules, honey. And these things fell off the walls. I think they don't like temperature change. So as soon as it warmed up here in the house, they were like bleh, bleh. 
down on the floor and my mom was like, oh my gosh, your house is haunted. The picture's fallen off the walls. Uh, so the pictures luckily didn't end up damaged. They are fine. They kind of landed on our stair runner here, but I'm just gonna nail them into the wall with a, like a normal nail. So I don't have to think and worry about other things falling off the walls. But this is a fun little project I was thinking about doing because I love hoarding antique picture frames. I have some really beautiful ones in the garage that I can't quite let go of yet. They have that beautiful gesso or gesso work around the edges and they're so gorgeous. And those frames, if you even try to go to a frame shop and buy something somewhat similar, they're like cha-ching. So that's why I hoard them, okay? I have my reasons. But I'm thinking this year, this is our, our wedding anniversary is coming up here in a few weeks. And I wanted to do something different and special for anniversary. When you were together for a while and Pete and I have been a couple for 20 years. How does that make me? <laughs> We've been a couple for 20 years and married for almost 15 years. With that said, like it gets really hard to buy each other gifts. The longer you're together, it's, it's just more difficult to like think of something like, what do I give you? You already have the things, you know? And I don't really want things. I just want experiences, you know? I like to go eat or spend time with Pete and do something fun. I'll get my own things at garage sales, you know? <laughs> but I was thinking something that would be fun for an anniversary gift. I have this picture of us and I found it on the computer of our, our wedding day. Look at all the frames so you can see. But um, this, this was our wedding day and I, I finally found the original file on our computer and I was thinking like how cool would it be to get this picture like blown up and printed maybe in a sepia tone like black and white but I'm thinking sepia like that warmer black and white tone and use one of my antique picture frames and put it up on the wall because like old Victorian historical homes everyone has their family photos going up the stairway and I'm like why don't we have that so I'm gonna surprise Pete this year and I'll bring you to the frame shop when we when I do that but I just think it'll be super beautiful and I don't even know maybe I won't say anything I'll just hang it up in the stairway and see how long it takes them to notice. I'm I, like, you should place your bets below on like how many days or weeks do you think it'll take them to notice because our house has a lot of things coming and going in it all the time as you know. <laughs> okay y'all, I need to have a garage sale this year. I actually am thinking about getting an antique booth again, so stay tuned for that. But these are a couple of the frames they have. Obviously these ones are mirrors. So I might see if my mom wants this. We're gonna be working on a bathroom project and maybe that would be cool in her new space if we painted or something. I have these frames. This one is massive, so I don't think I'm gonna do that one, but aren't those beautiful? Let's go see if I can find any others. This is another spot. I never showed you. I don't show you my mud room when it was ugly and I do not show you my garage filled with junk. <laughs> <laughs> treasures, right? I have this frame back here. Let's look at this. Oh my gosh, this frame. This frame will need a nail. I'm not gonna hang this up with stupid command strips. Gosh, this frame I bet you is probably like 20 pounds. Look at the back of this. See how it's all constructed? That's why this baby is built to last and it's heavier than heck. But I think that this will be really, really pretty on the stairway. And it's a nice size too, or I don't think it would be too expensive to get glass cut or a mat and everything and have it done professionally. But won't that be pretty? So this is a new frame and this one is pretty complimentary to the same style. I think that'll look really pretty. And I am not gonna paint this thing. I love this antique gold. It's so beautiful. Imagine like this, but big. <laughs> I think that would be a really cool anniversary present. I'm excited to do that one. I'm gonna change out my white dress and go water all the plants and stuff before it gets too hot today. This whole week's supposed to be around 100 here in the valley. So I wanna water all my little blooms out there. Anyhow, it was fun to catch up with you today. And it's been awesome being able to be home this summer and finish all these little projects that I've kind of been dreaming on throughout the year. I hope I inspired you to maybe like pick a space in your home or a little corner that you thought, you know, was ugly and give it a little love, you know? And I will see you in the next video.